Good morning, everyone. That is the sound. And one hand clapping. Of little waves slapping against the hull. And you only get that when you're on a boat. You don't get that on land. What are you doing there? I'm waking up slowly. So, as you can see, we are no longer at Nick's parents' house. We are back on our boat. And, um, yeah, there's a bit of a story behind that. Oh, God, I cannot tell you how... I think thrilled is an understatement, ecstatic is an understatement, relieved is a vast understatement. I We are just over the moon to be back on the boat. I can't believe that we're back on the boat. Just so happy right now. <laughs> So we spent two, over two months, uh, three months at Nick's parents' place, and um, it was, you know, it was, it was great. We were very lucky that we had um, a nice big house and we had a lovely garden. The weather was amazing. We had, you know, lots of barbecues, and it was just all very lovely um, being able to have that green space outside um, since we were, you know we had to stay at home essentially for three months so we're very 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 grateful that we were able to do that at Nick's parents place um but at the end of the day you know it was still not our home and uh we have been trying to get back to our home for well for three months now and um we finally made it yesterday was a huge day and um we are going to tell that story to you right now and show you how we got back to our boat. Are you happy to be back? There you sit. <laughs> <laughs> there is something about sleeping in. I mean, I'm not sure if it's just psychological or you just get used to it. This bed is so bloody comfortable. It is, isn't it? Mm. It is the most comfortable bed. The place is a tip. It needs cleaning from top to bottom. <sighs> But we're home and happy and we've got coffee and milk and we've probably got some bakery nearby and the madame will sell us a croissant. Yes, so let's get a coffee and um, tell the story of how we got home. <laughs> Do we have a story to tell you? This is like the morning after the day before. Yeah, it sure is. And while that used to mean walking home at five in the morning, having climbed out of a hedge, bed, a hedge. gutter <laughs> that you didn't know you used to be, things have changed now in our lives. Mm. Anyway, so this is the story of yesterday, how we managed to get ourselves from London yeah. back to Ruby Rose yeah. legally. Of course, legally. Very legally. You guys know by now that we are an absolute super, super straight. Yeah. yeah, we like we do not even bend the rules, let alone break them. I have to say that I'm still feeling. I feel like I'm still in shock. I'm not going to overblow it. I, I'm, yeah, no, actually, no, 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 <laughs> no I'm, wait, I am going to. Actually, actually, no, I am going. No, 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 no I, it, 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 I am still surprised that we're back here. Well, I was just talking to mum before and those were the words I used. I feel like I'm still in shock. This isn't just for the camera. I genuinely no, 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 am no. like sitting here reeling from... Everything. Yeah, from the, the whole experience oh. of, of not just getting back on the train, which was an experience, but also, I don't know, I feel like the last three months has just been a really weird dream. Yeah, well listen, COVID-19 aside, let's get on with the story. Today is a very special day. Today is Great Escape Day. Yeah. Today is a day that we are going to try 
and get back to our home, our boat, which is our home. You look very nice on that camera. Yeah, I was just thinking that you look very nice. <laughs> There you go, this is what you call a good relationship, when you can say that about your partner at 6am in the morning, eh? It's 6am in the morning. And, and it's bright and hot and... And I can hear the birds singing. And my mother water in the garden. And my coffee is definitely waiting for me downstairs, ready to be drunk. Drank? Drunk. Drunk. So that's our day, so we hope that you actually get to see this footage, because if... If you don't, it means that we didn't go. <laughs> So this time tomorrow, we'll be back here and we'll be filming this introduction hopefully in a few weeks <laughs> again. So legally, how do we get back? It's a grey issue. Um, there's so much been written on the forums, the, the European forums, the European sailing forums about can you travel, can you not travel, can you sail, can you not sail, and specifically to France. Europe's borders are closed, so if you're not part of the EU, you cannot get in. That's, that's, a, that's a given. Um, the UK, despite having left, is still allowed to... UK citizens can still go into Europe, so they, the concession was given to us, as, as we still get EU membership well, for this year. Yes, technically. Um, however, that's not just the only issue. No, it's we, not, it's, it wasn't just the EU's external borders that were closed, it was the EU's internal borders, so borders between EU countries that were closed as well. So um, France's borders, the French borders, um, were, were closed and are closed. Some of the most disadvantaged parts of the UK are suffering the effects of the pandemic more acutely. So we looked at the documentation and it would appear that um, we were allowed to travel back to France if we were travelling to our primary residence, which we were. The first thing we had to do, so our first obstacle was to try and convince French immigration that we were, had a right to enter the country. So that's point one. Now to, to get round this we contacted the marina manager who thankfully, thank you Xavier, follows our YouTube channel and has done from before we turned up in La Rochelle. Now, that doesn't mean we called in a favour, it means that he could verify verify that yeah. we were liveaboards, he'd been following our channel. So we contacted him and said, Xavier, look, would you mind as the manager of the marina just writing a letter saying or writing a statement saying we know they live aboard, which he very kindly did. And he doesn't do anything he shouldn't have been doing. We live on board. So we went armed with that piece of, you know, that piece of uh, evidence mm. of, so or supporting documentation. Alright, moment of truth, you can understand me, um, we're going to head in, we're going to head in in a minute and uh, hopefully they'll let us on to train. I'm obviously not going to film until we get through. When we got to customs um, and immigration, we found that there was a long queue to get on the, on the train and because they only have two, you know, they only had two or three services a day rather than one every 20 minutes. And the problem was that as we were stuck in the queue, we could hear the people or two specific couples, one, I'm not sure what their relationship, but one was mother and daughter being declined entry, you know, being returned away from the train. As realistically as I can, I can kind of like imagine this. It's 50-50 we're going to get through. As far as France is concerned, um, the the paperwork that or the, the guidance that was issued from the French government in regards to who can enter the country at this moment during this crisis was, and I this is a direct quote, a spouse or a dependent, as in a child, um, of the EU citizen. And I'm not his spouse, and I'm obviously not his child either. So... There was I'm a fairly sure it does say family member. It, it doesn't, and and we've come up against this before. This is not the first time that we've come up against problems because I'm not his spouse, and the wording says spouse. So, um, point being is that yes, we were worried that you know the wording in the document or the guidance was was a bit restrictive um, and didn't describe our relationship exactly. So that was another concern. Anyway, the French um, French immigration officer was very very nice, yeah, and he took the documentation and and looked at it and. Waved us, waved us straight through. Well, that was pretty hectic. Um, yeah, so stage one of trying to get back to the boat is making sure that the French are happy to um, recognise that we live on a boat. 
thankfully they did. We had uh, our attestation, which shows that we have a reason to travel. And thank you so much to Xavier at La Rochelle Marina for providing a, a statement to say that we're full-time liverboards. Um, that really sealed the deal. So now I've just got to let my heart rate reduce from a frightened rabbit's kind of level to something more normal. And then we will hopefully be able to get on the Eurostar. Um, in about an hour and then that's stage one done so uh, pretty stressful so far Um, but you know everyone's adhering to the correct social distancing so that's okay anyway that's uh, that's our morning and um, fingers crossed for us that we get back um, to Ruby Rose tonight. We are scheduled to arrive in Paris Gare du Nord at 13.47 local time. My name is Claude and along with Najet, we are your travel managers. It is our pleasure to assist you in any way we can. Do not hesitate to talk to us as we walk through the train. Please be also aware that our trains are fitted with sensitive smoke detectors. Smoking, including electronic and vapor cigarettes, is strictly forbidden on board. I will also remind you that it's compulsory. And you know, that got us over hurdle number one. Yes. We then had to get to Paris, get across Paris, and get from Paris to La Rochelle. Um, the issue there is that you're not allowed to travel more than 100 kilometers within France without another set of forms. Really warm. Okay, we've got to make some speed, babe. We've got a lot to we've got, we've got some stuff to do. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very excited and very relieved and very warm all at the same time. Excited, relieved and warm. I'm waiting for the um, metro. The metro. The metro. And then we are going, I think, what did you say, 12 stops? 17 stops. Uh, 17 stops. Quite long stops. Until, it's um, really quick though, they're like every two minutes one stops. Yeah. Um, so we have to go across town to the next train station and then we'll be getting on our train to La Rochelle. Fingers crossed. Here we are, we've got through the Paris Metro. We now need to wait for the regional train to take us to La Rochelle. It's all a bit strange. Um, having been cooped up in London for 12 weeks, the shops are open in the station. So yeah, it's odd. It's not as, uh, not as locked down as London. We're both pretty tired. Um, today has been stressful. I think the anticipation of having to potentially um, row with customs officials or police about whether or not we would be allowed into the country because we are on paper completely allowed in we're not doing anything we shouldn't be doing however there is a question about Teresa being on an Australian passport whether she would be allowed in or whether she would be considered my partner thankfully they did bat an eyelid and now we are we've done two of the three train journeys we've got to do we've now got to get the regional train which is about ooh, two and a half hours to La Rochelle and then we've got about a 40 minute walk to the boat. Then we've got to get the boat sorted out and then I believe there are four beers that I left for our arrival. So we'll get the fridge on, get those beers chilled down if we've got something to celebrate and um, toast you all with uh, the end of a long, stressful and very strange day. You look like, um, what was that, Splinter from the Ninja Turtles? Like a Ninja Turtle. Upstairs, my love. 75, 77. Oh. I saw you down the motorway. There was something about you that day. I can still hear the shimmering sound. The hill is near the 
let's get right up Walk up to every top We couldn't tell the sky from the ground I know my life Luckily, there was no one on board. I think once we got to that park, that, that was quite straightforward. No one stopped us past the Eurus Tunnel um, checkpoint for immigration in, in London. Yeah, absolutely. So the only time that we had to show any paperwork or evidence of why we're travelling or whatever was um, at immigration in St Pancras. Yeah. Oh, that sounds bright. Well, the last thing that we have to do is walk back to the boat. According to Google Maps, it's uh, 1.3 miles. But even though I've got a heavy bag to carry, um, I don't mind because we are back in La Rochelle. I finally got that bloody mask off my face. Christ almighty, that is uncomfortable to be wearing all day. And soon we'll be back home. So here we are, the last, what is this, 200 meters? Yeah. We've been going since, whoo, about six o'clock this morning. And in many ways, the last couple of hundred meters is the, the bit that stresses me the most. I know that our boat's there, but I'd never like leaving her. And so I'm always apprehensive that she's gonna be okay. And so yeah, so literally we've got down the pontoon. Teresa and I have been talking about this. We consider ourselves pretty damn lucky to be able to get back to the boat mid-May. Uh, I think Teresa said to me the other day, if I can get back for my birthday, which is the 11th of June, by the way, then she'll consider that to be a win. So it's now 20th of May. So I've got to go and buy a birthday card and maybe a chocolate bottle or something nice. Don't tell anyone. Anyway. So yes, the last 100 metres to Ruby Rose and yeah, kind of I got a little bit, some butterflies. Oh, God almighty. It's kind of strange when you are so emotionally attached to a boat. Um, she has kept us safe and sound for so many years. There's a particular smell to this marina, which is because it's so tidal, it's kind of drying kelp. And I absolutely love it. How are you feeling, Therese? Ooh, I'm tired, but I'm very happy. Yeah, that's a Alanis Morissette song, isn't it? Yeah. Where is she? I can see her bow. Yeah, I see can see her bow. I can see her bow. Oh, she's still floating, that's a bonus. So that's always what we like to see, which the boat is still afloat. What a beautiful friggin' boat. There she is. Next to that Neil. <laughs> Oops. Hello, my love. Hello, my love. How have you been? Have you been good? We have missed you lots and lots. Beautiful, beautiful baby. Oh, darling, darling. Smell as beautiful as you always do. Oh, God, I cannot tell you how. I think thrilled is an understatement. Ecstatic is an understatement. Relieved is a vast understatement. I, we are just over the moon to be back on the boat. I can't believe that we're back on the boat. Just so happy right now. How's everything looking, babe? Got stuff in the fridge. I just cut the beers up against the freezer plate. That is, have you put the fridge on? Yep, the fridge is on. Alright, Nick is sorting everything out and uh, I'm going to get our stuff down, get um, our groceries, our couple of bits of food that we bought, put in the fridge, get those beers chilling and uh, as soon as we can, we'll be sitting in the cockpit enjoying a well-earned drink. <sighs> Can't wait. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we are having our morning coffee back on Ruby Rose. So, cheers to you all. We are super, 
super excited to be back. I'm not putting words into your mouth, I'm speaking for myself. I am super <laughs> excited. I, I mean, literally, if I could bottle this level of euphoria and sell it to you all, I'd be richer than Jeff Bezos. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a strange feeling. I was just totally in shock last night when we got back to the boat, and this morning when I woke up in my own bed, it was um, pretty oh, exciting God. as well. Oh. So we have a big day. We have a big few. Well, we have a big few months ahead of us, but um, today we we have a lot to do. Yeah, today we've got the you know first thing you know unpack, try and get the boat clean, and then we've got to get the boat ready to sail. We've got you know I came back with this suitcase and my rucksack full of boat spares bits to kind of put right to kind of change out and so the next week or so we'll be getting the boat ready to sail after that we will hope that the French government relax the regulations on sailing we are allowed to sail within a hundred kilometers of here yeah or we can go straight home back to the UK in a straight line without stopping which we don't want to do which we don't want to do so we are just holding tight and we believe that we think we'll relax but we can sail for 100 kilometers and sail around these little islands which are beautiful yeah absolutely but we're probably not going to end up leaving here for another week or two yeah, and then we um we're you know in no rush the weather's beautiful la rochelle's gorgeous um and you know as nick said uh the, the islands nearby are spectacular That is refreshing, my love. Yeah. Whew. What a crazy day. This rosé tastes so good. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that you're all staying well and you're staying safe and your families are all safe. We are so, so happy to be back on the boat and um, yeah, we just can't wait to get sailing again. So we've got so much work to do um, over the next couple of days and uh, that's what next week's episode is gonna be about. So if you guys like watching boat work, <laughs> then next week's episode is definitely for you. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we publish and uh, we'll see you next week with another episode from beautiful France. Cheers.